It's Canada Day, and as a proud Canadian, it is my civic duty to fight the sky with fireworks, just to remind it that Canada's still here, and that we're sorry about all the fireworks. For this project, we're using Russell. Now, Russell is the KR10 from KUKA Robotics that ended up beating Maddie in the Robots vs. Children contest where they were coloring in pictures. Now, we're going to be using the same base that we used for Susan. It's a big, heavy base, a few hundred pounds, which is definitely big and sturdy enough to support Russell. It also has some spots for a forklift to pick it up. So I can do all of the setup of everything in the shop here, then just pick it up with a forklift and drop it wherever I need for setting off the show. To light the fireworks, I'm using this mini saber from Hacksmith Industries. Now this is a blowtorch that's similar to their lightsaber that they had made. It's very small, very hot and very focused, which is good for lighting small fuses and making sure that I don't accidentally light everything else on fire. The other thing is that it lights super consistently. Out of the whole bunch of fireworks I got, this one's definitely my favorite. If there's any wind or pressure changes from other fireworks going off, these fuses will start to move around, and that makes it really hard for the robot to light them without using just like a giant blowtorch. So I made these little 3D printed mounts. Where you can put the fuse through, and that will hold the fuse in one spot no matter what's happening around it. Since every show is going to be different, and I don't want to have to manually program this every time, we're going to be using Aruco markers. These are the same way that I located the fridge in the Beer Sherpa video. Normally you would take the fireworks and bury them in sand, but in this case, we're just gonna screw them straight down to the boards. Using a Z2i stereo camera, the arm can move in a circle around itself and find Aruco markers. Once it can find and locate these relative to itself, it knows exactly where the fuses are, no matter how far away or which orientation they're in. It only has to do this scan once, once it's placed down on site, because the fireworks are gonna be secured down to the platform. The Z stereo camera on the arm is used to find the Aruco markers around the robot, but it is also used to see the world in 3D. Because every setup is going to be different, where the fireworks are and where the mounting platforms are is gonna be different. So the robot needs to be able to get a view around itself of objects that it needs to avoid. Once the robot knows what the world around it looks like in 3D, it can avoid all of those obstacles in 3D when planning its paths. 
Of course, when doing vision processing, you're gonna want a decent computer right near where your robot is. So for that, we're gonna use our Jetson AGX Orin from NVIDIA. This thing has more than enough power to do point cloud processing and tracking Aruco markers, as well as driving the arm itself. I'm using a small servo motor to press down on the igniter whenever I need it lit. That's gonna be controlled from the GPIO on the Jetson. This system has an industrial robot arm, which we need to make safe. It also has fire and explosives, and is probably gonna be around drunk people. So safety is something we definitely need to add. For that, these safety ladders from Hakuyo. These things we can set up on little platforms that you can move around once they're actually set up on site so that it will cover the whole area around the robot. If the robot's too close to anything, it won't work. Or if anyone comes too close to it while it's running, it'll immediately stop. Fireworks are surprisingly dangerous, especially these consumer grade ones where you don't need any sort of training or licensing to be able to fire them. This chart is of the US over the last couple years. Canada has different laws around fireworks, but the consumer grade ones are still pretty much the same, so equally as dangerous. Trying to make a setup where the person is removed is the safest way to do it. The person will be back operating the computer or standing far enough away, so even if anything goes wrong, no one's even close. Well, we're all set up, now we just need to wait for the sun to go down. If you like this video or you like robots at all, consider subscribing, we've got lots of good stuff on the channel and more coming. Robots are awesome, happy Canada Day, see you next time.